Hi, I'm Randall Heyman, a university academic. You're on one of my Corona Help playlists. I make quick turnaround videos for students and educators during the coronavirus outbreak. So if you'd like me to make a video for you, then just email me, coronahelpmathematics at gmail.com. Or you could uh, comment below any of my videos. So someone's asked me to have a look at what they've typed up in regard to a video of mine on finite fields. Um, which I'm happy to do. I'm not going to go through checking each line. I don't think that's a good use of my time, but I will make some comments uh, as we go through this. So the, the, the key thing here is that there are two multiplication, uh, two tables, one for multiplication, one for addition. And let me see if I can get some annotation going here. Um, here we can see the, here's the field the field that we're interested in. Um, so this Z3 here, this tells us that the numbers that we use will be zero, one, and two, and addition and multiplication of those numbers will be modulo three. So if I go up here, I can go that, you know, two, when we see two times two, we're gonna say, well, that equals one, because it equals four in the, in the normal world, but four is the same as one modulo three. If you're not comfortable with modular arithmetic, this is going to be quite difficult for you. Have a look at my video, Modular Arithmetic Made Easy. Now, the second thing that it says, that this says is that um, we're going to construct the finite field consisting of polynomials. And the polynomials, this is, um, if you go through some of the videos I've done on finite fields, uh, one way we can construct a field is that um, we take all the, the polynomials that whose degree is at most one less than this one. So this has got here, we can see the two. So we're taking all the polynomials AX plus B, where A and B will just be elements of zero, one and two, because we're working modulo three. If you're not comfortable with it, you'll see as we go through. Okay, so now let me, let me make some comments. Now, can I roll up the screen? Clear all drawings, okay. Um, how do I do a mouse? Okay, right. So this is the addition table that I've been sent. So let me now make some comments on that. So the first thing that we'd look at is here, we've got addition. So it's the addition, not multiplication. Um, so what we've got up in this row is we've got all the elements of the, fine, of the finite field. And when I look through here, I can see that it's consistent with what I said before, that um, it's all the polynomials um, that are either constants or linear, where all the coefficients are either zero, one or two. So that's all good. Uh, and now down here, we've got the same sort of thing. So that's good. Um, when we look across, the first thing is when we add zero, of course, these ones here are going to be the same. That's the same as that. That's the same as that. And when I go down here, down this way, similar sort of thing. I'll just check. Yeah, that looks right. That looks right. Um, what else have we got? Well, in a field like this, you would, you would expect, if we just take this row, for example, we would expect to see every single element of the field in this row. So we can see we've got zero, one, two, x, x plus one, x plus two, two x, two x plus one, two x plus two. So that's all good. And finally, we might just see if, if uh, the person who sent me this has added up one or two of these correctly, I'll just do one. So this is here, x plus two and x plus two. So, why has he written X plus two like this with the, the brackets? Well, it's actually an equivalence class because this X plus two is basically, this is actually the set of all the polynomials that have a remainder of X plus two when we divide by X squared plus one. So it's, uh, well, obviously it's gonna include X plus two, but it's also gonna include um, X plus two, um, what other ones would it include? 
uh, it would be the polynomial, I suppose, um, uh, x squared plus x. I think that one also will have a remainder. Um, x squared plus x equals x plus 2. Yeah, I think that'll work. Anyway. So uh, we, we can just deal with the brackets as, as they've been written. So we were going to check that x plus 2 plus x plus 2. So all I would do is I would just, the rule is that you can add equivalence classes. You can add, add a representative of each equivalence class. This is a representative of this, of that equivalence class and the same here. So I can just basically add them 2x plus 4 and the 4 now becomes uh, 2x plus 1 because 4 is the same as 1 which, which we've discussed so I would expect to see 2x plus 1 and he's got 2x plus 1 okay now let's go to uh, mouse we can go down and we'll just do the same thing here I better clear the uh, all the drawings and let's have a look here um, so we're multiplying when we multiply down here by zero, down here, we can see we get zeros as we should. When we multiply by one, we should get the same as what we've got here. So in other words, this X times this one is equal to X. Um, I would have a, once again, you would expect that each row would have a unique um, set. I mean, sorry, it would have every member of the field. And in particular, you want to know that, he, that they've got an inverse, but I mean, you could check any of them, but you can see there's an inverse there. Well, sorry, there's a, there's two things that we multiply to get by one here. There's a one here, one here, a one here, one here, a one here and a one here. So um, looks pretty good. Now we might just check one. I can see that he's checked X squared. So I'll do it. I, I think this is a bit verbose for what you need. Um, if I was doing it, I would just go, okay, we're going to check, x times x. Well, that is equal to x squared. And what does that equal? Well, that equals, um, that's equal to x squared plus one. I'm doing that because I know that's the irreducible polynomial that we've used. Um, so that would be, uh, well, you could either go, you could go plus minus one because I can see when I add these two here in this row that I'll get X squared, which is what I had up here, so that's fine. But otherwise, once you've done this a bit, you would just go straight to this line because minus one or negative one is the same as two. And this thing here, a representative, that is a representative of that equivalence class, but uh, we can also just put zero there. And so we would expect to get two and I think that's what we get. Here's X times X and we get two. So looks like that's been done correctly as well. So I hope that's helped the person who sent it to me and anyone else that's watching. If you've got any further questions on this or any aspect of maths, uh, let me know. And if I think I can help with the video, I'll do so.